Hey, Plumber Tom here. If you're preparing for a plumbing state test or trying to improve your knowledge of code and understanding of plumbing, don't forget to check in the description below for links to study guides, online courses, and other resources that will help you to learn the code and pass your test. When you click on those links and purchase resources, you're helping me to be able to create more great content. Thanks for watching. Hello, welcome to lesson one in this drainage pipe venting course. I'm Plumber Tom, and in this lesson, we're going to look at the fundamental principles of venting and some of the code requirements that you really need to know. As drain systems were developed, the overall concept is fairly simple. Let's just take this wastewater and get it as far away from us as possible. But one of the challenges in this was how much water can you put down a given size of pipe? And once we started attaching fixtures to that, how many fixtures could we connect? So you can see this took time to experiment with. The number one goal of a drainage system is to put that wastewater down and send it away. And if all goes well, we never see any of that again. As people experimented with drains, they soon found that they had problems with the drain flow. As fluids move into the pipe, the air can compress and hold up the flow of the pipe, causing a slow glug glug type drain. Similar to if you take a milk jug and turn it upside down, it doesn't have an even flow of a pour. It's going to kind of glug as air comes into the container. This brings us to the first fundamental principle of venting. Fundamental principle one, airflow is required for a drain to work properly. As fluids move through the pipe, air is displaced. If there's no air for that air to go, it builds up pressure, which can slow down or even stop the flow of fluids. On the other hand, movement of fluids can cause a vacuum of air in other parts of the drainage system, which can slow or even stop the flow of fluids. So adequate connection to open air is absolutely necessary in order for drainage waste to flow. This principle will be emphasized throughout this training. Fundamental principle number two, vents must terminate outdoors. When a drainage system has a vent that terminates outside, air can flow out when the fluids are compressed in the pipes. And it can be drawn in when fluid leaves the pipes and a vacuum is created. While code does allow for air admittance valves, it also requires that somewhere in the building, a vent pipe be run from the building drain and terminate outside. Air admittance valves should be a last resort since outdoor air is the best way to ensure a good airflow in the drain. We will examine the use of air admittance valves in another lesson. Fundamental principle number three, dry vent connection must run vertically from the drain. A dry vent is referring to a pipe that is connected to a drainage system, which will not receive any wastewater from a fixture. A vertical is considered a pipe coming off the top of a drain at any angle down to a 45 degree from the center line. This is to ensure that the vent will not become blocked by drainage over time. If a dry vent comes off horizontally from the side of the drain, waste could build up in that pipe and block the vent. Some codes require a six inch vertical rise above the flood level rim. Fundamental principle number four, trap arm distances are limited. A trap arm is a horizontal branch coming off of a vertical stack or a horizontal branch, which extends to the location of the fixture. Obviously, drains have slope in order for waste to flow downstream. If the trap arm extends too far, it will slope up above the connection point of the vent. This will limit the airflow and the drain will not function properly. For this reason, there is a limit to the length of a trap arm that extends to the fixtures. These limits are listed on tables in the plumbing code for various pipe sizes. Fundamental principle number five, 
vents are required to slope back to the drains. This is because water vapors, or even rainwater, can collect inside of the vent piping. So even though the vent is intended to provide air, there is the possibility for a buildup of liquids within that vent pipe. Installing slope to a vent ensures an open airflow by providing a way for moisture to flow to the drain. For this reason, vent pipes should not be installed with any traps, meaning a pipe that drops down and then comes back up by the use of fittings. This would create a belly where liquids could settle and block the airflow. All right, now that we have covered five fundamental principles for venting, let's look at the actual methods. We're going to examine some of the most basic methods for venting drainage pipe. And let's start with the individual vents. When it comes to providing airflow to the drains, the individual vent is the very best option because each fixture trap is provided with its own vent. The individual vent is always a dry vent, meaning that the vent will not receive waste from any other fixture. Having a vent for every single fixture ensures plenty of airflow. An individual vent can rise vertically off the top of a drain stack by the fixture, or it can also rise vertically off of a horizontal branch, provided that it does not branch off any lower than 45 degrees from the center line of the horizontal branch, as we discussed before. While providing an individual vent to each fixture is the best way to provide airflow, it is also the most costly venting method because it requires much more material and installation labor than the other venting methods we will examine in this course. And let's have a look at a few specific examples of individual vents. This illustration has a vertical vent coming off of a vertical pipe. This illustration has a vertical vent coming off of a horizontal pipe. And this illustration has a vertical vent coming off of a horizontal pipe at a 45 degree angle and turning vertical. In this illustration, we see an individual vent, but there is a violation here because the vent is connected to a horizontal branch instead of the trap arm. The vent should come directly off of that trap arm. All right, let's talk for a minute about a different venting method. This is called the crown vent. It was used in the past probably more than it is today, but it still is an approved method for venting. A crown vent is an individual vent that branches off immediately after the trap. In the early days of plumbing, the crown vent was a vertical extension off of the downstream side of the trap itself. This direct connection to the trap would often lead to the vent becoming blocked because the waste from the trap would flow up into the vent. For this reason, crown vents are required to branch off two pipe diameters downstream from the trap. For example, a crown vent for an inch and a half pipe would branch off three inches downstream from the trap. Crown vents are not very common, but it could be used inside of a cabinet under a sink if connected to an air admittance valve. And this illustration gives us a violation. This is an incorrect crown vent because with that santee on the trap, it is too close to the trap. Let's have a look at one more venting method. This is the common vent. A common vent is a vertical pipe that receives waste from two fixtures. The International Plumbing Code requires common vented fixtures to be on the same floor level and allows for connections to be at the same height from the floor or at different levels. This means one branch could be stacked on top of the other coming off for that common vent. Now the Uniform Plumbing Code further specifies that drain connections for a common vent must be at the same level and that a double fixture fitting must be used, not a santee. A common vent is basically a two-for-one deal where more fixtures are served by one vent. It is useful because it can save cost on labor and material that would be required if each fixture were individually vented. To ensure there is enough airflow, the International Plumbing Code limits the number of drainage fixture units that can be connected 
to the common vent. This is listed on table 911.3. For example, a 2-inch drain stack normally allows for 6 drainage fixture units, but when a 2-inch pipe is used as a common vent, it is limited to 4 drainage fixture units instead of 6. Let's have a look at some illustrations. In this illustration, we see two lavatories that are branching off of a stack back to back, common vented. In this common vent illustration, we see a laundry sink and a washer connection branching off at different levels. In this illustration, we have two toilets being served by a common vent in a vertical stack. In this common vent illustration, we see two toilets being served by a common vent in a horizontal branch. This illustration shows a bathtub and a shower being served by a common vent on a horizontal branch. And now let's have a look at some violations. This illustration shows two traps branching off of the same trap arm from a vertical stack. This is not work for a common vent. And in this illustration we have another violation, two traps branching off of the same trap arm from a horizontal branch. In this lesson we have discussed fundamental principles that apply wherever vents are installed. We have also examined some basic methods for installing vents, including the individual vent, the crown vent, and the common vent. Join me in the next lesson where we will explore wet vents and some of the possible installation methods for vertical and horizontal wet venting. Thanks for watching.